Friday. I was not three octaves too high. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Okay, my countdown clock is not quite count. There we go. <laughs> Let's try that again. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Happy Friday. We have made it through another week. Hooray. Oh, I'm so glad the weekend is here. I don't know how about the rest of you. Um, yeah, lots of stuff going on. We are like in the final push to get all of our Halloween stuff up so that on Monday morning, the newspaper is coming and one of our local news shows is coming Oh, to talk to us about our haunt. I'm really, I'm not nervous about that because live TV is something that I did for years. That's not I'm not I'm not worried about that, but I am worried about the haunt being ready because they're also calling for rain. Of course they are. It's been dry for like <laughs> three months. We've had no rain and then all of a sudden in October it decides to rain. So I don't know. We'll just have to see what happens. You guys out there say some uh some happy happy prayers for me and uh yeah, let's hope that we don't have a big muddy mess. That's probably my biggest concern is big muddy mess. All right, so today we're going to do something fun. Good morning. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Robin. Hi, hi. Who else is here? Hi, Stacy. So glad to see you guys. Um, if you guys don't care, if you can give this a share to some groups, that would be awesome. Hey, Joan. What's up, Joan? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I don't know. Somebody just took over my body. I don't know. Um... Yeah, so what I was saying was today we're going to do a really fun project because we're playing with patina paints, and that is one of my favorite things. I love getting my hands dirty. I love playing with paint, whether it's in jewelry or whether it's just creating elsewhere. Um, I use lots of paint in my life, and, you know, when you can mix it together with jewelry, which is another thing that I love, then you've kind of, like, checked off all the boxes. Really cool. So... Let me start this from the beginning, okay? I recently have decided that perhaps I would try selling in a booth again, okay? I have not done that in, I can't even begin to tell you how long it's been. It's got to be more than, we're probably pushing maybe 10 years, maybe not quite 10 years, 8 years, something like that. So, I never had any luck with a booth and I have the whole setup like I have the tents and the tables and the you know the banners and the whole bit so I have all of the parts <laughs> you know um that's never been a problem it's just been that when I have sold at sh craft fairs and shows I have always had like the world's worst luck it's ridiculous I go in I'm optimistic I've got my prices set at what I think is fair and Maybe the first day I'll do good, and by good I mean just pay off like what I paid for the booth space. Second day, it's always a disaster. Third day, I'm scratching my head and wondering like why did I even, <laughs> why did I even bother? So I gave that up years ago. That was, you know, it was like, okay, well, I can't make any money selling my jewelry, but I'm so much better at teaching. The, um, <sighs> The passion for selling just kind of, you know, I mean, it, it came and it went. I did have an Etsy shop once upon a time, too. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I did okay. It wasn't great. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I, I do have a point to this story. Um, I recently have decided that maybe I would try that again. I have, I have some friends in the Bead Society. Um, Joan, I've got Christian, and we have been, you know throwing around the idea that maybe we would do some booths coming up. Um, probably not this year because I'm definitely not prepared. But I thought that I would start like building up my jewelry stash because normally what happens is I will make something and unless I absolutely love it, when I'm done, I take it apart and I save all the PC parts. Um, because that's really, it's really more cost effective, honestly, for me um, to take everything apart and, and try to recycle and reuse what I can. But... I've been thinking. <laughs> I've been thinking. I don't know. I spent a lot of time on Pinterest, obviously working on the Jesse James Speed's Pinterest page and all of that. And so while I'm on Pinterest, I see lots of jewelry inspiration. I'm always inspired. And then I see what you guys are creating in the stash group and, and what you post on your Facebook timelines. And I'm just like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> I mean, I do do that, you know, I mean, because that's my job. But I want to 
I want to put some stuff out there and see what happens. Maybe get some bites on it. I don't know. Nobody ever asks me, hey, is that for sale? Because I wear my own jewelry a lot and nobody ever asks. So I'm always like, I mean, it's just not worth it, you know. But I think I'm going to try again. Long story short, because this has gone on way too long. I know you guys want a project. We are going to get there. Um, long story short, I was thinking about what kinds of styles of jewelry that I wanted to use. And... <clears throat> I'm particularly inspired by uh, Victorian looking jewelry. Um, I know that's really weird, right? But it's probably like the old goth teenager that, that lives in my soul <laughs> that I left behind so many years ago. I, um, I'm really inspired by things that have antique brass components and filigree and things like that. And then when you take it to the next level and you add paint, patina paints, oh my gosh, or, you know, Renaissance wax or Gilder's paint, all of those things that just really, really excite me that I have, but I never use. So I was thinking, okay, that's where I'll start. And we're actually going to start with that today with today's project. It's not like over the top, like Victorian era. This is like very, still very fall and fall inspired. We're going to use a butterfly, um, which is normally like a spring summer type thing. But I think that when we add the paints to this, it kind of brings it into fall. I don't know about where you live, but for me, right at the end of um, summertime, as, as the season starts to change. The weather's not necessarily changing, but the season itself is actually changing. The things that show up in my yard are hummingbirds and butterflies. It's like all of a sudden we have this like surge of little critters and creatures in our yard as they are making their, you know, their last minute preparations for the colder weather. And so I still think of butterflies as being kind of fall because they tend to show up in my yard around the same time the hummingbirds do and, you know, to get their last little snack in, I guess, before they go do whatever they do when it's winter time. So I don't know. Um, so we're going to make a necklace using some brass components and I was having trouble finding brass components that I liked. So <laughs> some of you know this, some of you don't, I have a really bad Amazon problem. Like I buy Amazon, I buy stuff on Amazon all the time. It's, it's kind of, I kind of need like a 12 step program. I buy so much stuff on Amazon. Um, and so I thought, well, I'll look for brass components on Amazon. So I did, but I didn't just pick out one thing of brass components. No, no, I had to go overboard and I bought three. <laughs> so I have, I have enough brass components for all of us. Let's all play. I'll just send you one. No, let me show you what I got. Okay, so the first package that came in was really small and all of the components that are in this are very small. Um, they are not particularly uh, sturdy. They're very bendable. They're very thin. This is one of my favorites, even though it is very, very thin. You see that guy? So I like him this direction with some tincha beads and like some more brass like um, bead caps and whatnot. Like that could be a really, really pretty earring. But there are other pieces in here like these guys. I have a ton of these. I don't really know what to do with them. I know you're supposed to uh, glue like a cabochon or a little rhinestone or whatever right here. So, you know, I don't know. I don't have any little rhinestones. And then there are a ton of these little coin looking things. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull one out because there's so many of them, but yet I cannot seem to grab one. So there are these, they look like little, little coins. I don't even know what that is that's on there. If somebody out there does tell me what that is. Cause I don't, I don't have a clue. Um, oh my gosh, Karen, she shops Vintage Salvage on Etsy. I, I don't know why I didn't think of that. <laughs> Remind me of that when this is over with, because what I need is more. <laughs> Clearly, when you see the next two bags, you're going to be like, she does not need to buy anything else. Um, yeah, so... I have this whole little bag and I wasn't satisfied with this one. This is hard to tell, you know, when you're shopping on Amazon, you see things, but it, it's different when you get it in your hands and you actually get to look at it. So I have this whole bag. Joan, guess what you're getting? <laughs> Joan's getting some of my components here. All right, so then purchase number two, a little bit bigger. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have a shopping problem. <laughs> so yeah look at that so not only does this bag have a little bit bigger components but there are some silver 
colored and that like brassy colored. I mean, this is a big honking piece of something. <laughs> I can do things with this, like, right? I know I can. This, there, there's good stuff in this one, but there's not a lot of matches, which also just drives me crazy because I like to make earrings. I want to make earrings out of things. These are good for bending. There's another one that's in here that's really good for bending. Okay, but they're huge, right? So there's no like middle ground and then there's a lot of flowers. I don't love the flowers. I just don't, I know, I probably should, but I don't. But I like pieces like this. But again, the quality on these was just not super, I wasn't like totally thrilled. Like it's good for what it is. Like you could layer these pieces together and that would be cool, you know? That would really definitely give it more of a sturdy base. Um, add some patina paints to it and you'd be good to go. But on their own, they are a little thin. So I don't know. So that wasn't good enough. <laughs> I had to go for purchase number three. <laughs> uh, I'm a little crazy. Just a little crazy. So this bag is stuffed full. And all three bags, I spent less than $20. Just so you know, like I may have a shopping problem, but it's not about spending money. <laughs> like I try to shop on the cheap. Oh, Joan says the flowers would look great riveted on leather uh, with maybe a leather flower. You're right. See, I need somebody else's brain to kind of, you know, um, but yeah, I don't know. So this, this bag has other things in it, but again, they're all huge. So there's a bunch of butterflies, which is cool because we're going to use a butterfly. We're not using this one in particular, but there were three different styles of butterfly, which I really, really liked. I thought those were great. There are these guys. I don't know. Still a lot bigger than what I had anticipated. There are these roses that I don't know. I don't know. I just wasn't super duper inspired. There's an owl. He needs some rhinestones. That's cute. Like that would be really cute on a really long necklace. I like I like. And then there are other pieces that like have super potential. This guy you can wrap around um, to make like, I don't know how to explain it. What are we looking at? <laughs> Hi, Emily. I love you, Emily. <laughs> we are looking at brass components that I bought like a million of on Amazon trying to find the right thing that I wanted. Come to find out, Karen had the answer all along and I should have just asked somebody. Um, but yeah, you could take this guy and like bend it around like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you can see how easily I'm bending this. Like you bend it around like that and you've got your beads or your tassel or whatever. I mean, there's potential here, right? But I don't know. It's still just huge pieces of things. The leaves, I do love the leaves. Really, really do love the leaves. I think those are great. So originally I was going to do a leaves project with you guys and then I don't know I saw the butterfly and I was like let's do the butterfly. These guys these are cool. I can use these. These are still a little on the big side for me but I can make it work. So yeah I went a little crazy just to find <laughs> things that inspired me. I have way too many brass components to ever use. I don't know what I'm going to do with them so you guys make some more suggestions because I am up for ideas. In the meantime, we're taking this other style. Yeah, we and Emily, we could punch holes in these. We actually are. We're going to punch some holes in this one. This is the butterfly that I, cho that I chose for today's project. Yes, Joan, the leaves would be fun to patina for fall. I know. I need to get some more patina paints. Some of the ones that I have are starting to dry up. So I need to, like, refresh my stock of patinas. I love them. Um, but anyway, there were... I think three different butterfly styles. This is the one that I picked, but it doesn't have any holes at all. So we're gonna punch some holes in it. And then there were these little flower components. There were only two of these. I didn't paint them ahead of time because I thought, well, if we're gonna patina them, we'll do it together. Um, so we'll do the butterfly, we'll do these little flower guys, and then we're gonna put it together to make a necklace. We're gonna use some antique brass chain to kind of make some drapes. Emily, yes, I'm going to donate some of them to my bead society. I'm going to go through them and like, yeah. Um, we're going to use some of the smaller beads from the Pumpkin Spice and Everything Nice 
uh, design elements mix from Jesse James beads because there are some really small, beautiful beads. There are some orange and like a burnt orange looking, you'll see them. And I know that like you've seen these in the past two days, the videos, um, because I did projects using them. So these orange beads will not be um, brand new to you. You've seen these before. And also these little tiny leaves as well. So I, I kind of worked it all in or at least I tried to. And so this is gonna be like my first step in the right direction project for you guys. We're gonna paint, but then to kind of start building up my stash so that maybe I'll do a show sometime. I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna need some talking up, you guys. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to talk me into it. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, something to mention, it just happens to be Sarah James's birthday. Yes, happy birthday, my dear. I love you so much. Um, you guys, she is having a huge, huge birthday sale over on jessiejamesbeads.com. So if you want to take advantage of picking up some patina paints, because there are some over there, there is also a vintage mix that is super cool. Um, the pumpkin spice and everything nice beads are there. You guys, when we get done here, go celebrate in style by shopping. I mean, what better way to celebrate, right? <laughs> um, so let's get started. Let's put some paint on these little components and I feel like there was something else, but I think I've kept you guys too long already. <laughs> I tend to do that. I talk a lot. We're going to punch some holes. Let's punch the holes first. All right. All righty. All righty. Here we go. Okay. So let me show you. This is the butterfly that we're gonna use. And you can see he does not have any holes, so it's kind of up to you to punch your own holes. And he's thin, but he's a little bit thicker than some of the other pieces that were in that, <laughs> that bag of crazy. So we're gonna punch some holes in him. And then I had these guys, these little flower guys, there's two of them, they didn't have holes in them either. I did go ahead and punch holes in these. One of them already has some beads attached to it just to save some time. Um, but this one, all I did was punch the holes and go ahead and put the jump rings in. So maybe we'll hit these with some paint. Um, I don't know, you know, it looks good either way, but We'll see. I only I only pulled out two two paints that I thought went with the orange beads. So we're gonna use these little leaves, and I've already wire wrapped the leaves, and then these beads that are from that pumpkin spice and everything nice mix, and then this guy that was also in the mix. I don't know. I'm just really feeling the orange and the brass. So we're gonna go with it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the patinas. I am using the Vintage Patina Paints, and I have pulled out two. I have Moss and Antique Copper, and I really thought that I had an orange. I don't, so that's why I went with the Antique Copper, uh, because I... <laughs> I wanted orange so bad and I thought you know I could mix it with something and make no I'm not even gonna bother with it so antique copper is the way we're gonna go we're gonna pretend like it's orange and it does its job we mix it with the moss here's the one that I already did I'm super super in love with it but we're gonna play around with it I mean it's always it's one of those things that like if you don't like it patina paint is really good about you can add more you can always add more and then you can buff it away if you don't like it so there are no mistakes with patina paints so we're gonna play around this is the one that I already did this is the one we're gonna do we're gonna punch holes um, on both of the wing tips up here and then down here on the bottom of its body just a little hole right here okay so let's do that first and then we will open up the paints so for a hole punch i am using this ancient hole punch i've had this for a million years it's a euro punch and it makes a 1.25 millimeter hole um i think that i have a changeable head for this but it's so tiny i don't know about you guys i tend to lose things that are that small <laughs> so i don't know I don't know. This is just, it's all I've got. It doesn't, it's not spring loaded or anything. It's honestly, I think, no, I glued the handles back on. Once upon a time, the handles slid off. I thought they were still loose, but they're not. I glued them. I must have. <laughs> all right. So we're going to punch holes. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do this one down here on the bottom of his body. Um, I'm just going to lay it over the hole 
and kind of line that up. And I'm really just eyeballing it. If you're crazy about um, exact measurements, flip this guy over and mark it with a permanent marker. I, I very rarely do that because I'm impatient. <laughs> so I punch the hole and it does kind of flatten it out a little bit, which I don't love, but we're, it's all right. We're gonna make it, we're gonna make it work. Now, something that I do notice is that it doesn't punch all the way out. So that little lip of metal is still there. I'm gonna come in with one of my cutters and just trim that off and feel it just to make sure that there's not anything left behind. If you've got a metal file, you can hit this with a metal file or you can hit it with an emery board. It doesn't really make much, much difference. All right, <clears throat> so we're gonna do the wing tips and I'm actually gonna do it right where that vein kinda ends. So it's not really in the center. It's, it's off center just a little bit. So right up there. Okay, and you can see there's, do you see that lip of metal on the back? Look, if I turn it sideways, you can see, see where it didn't punch it all the way out. If you've got a better hole punch than mine, <laughs> I probably need to upgrade. Um, you probably won't have that problem, but just get those little burrs off of there because I don't want that to get caught on my clothing. It's really sharp. All right, so we're going to do the same thing over here on the other side. Now, if you've got a metal punch and you've got pieces of this stuff, it doesn't have to be this exact stuff. If you've got vintage pieces or whatever you've got, all of your little metal components, if you've got a hole punch, like the world is your oyster, you can punch holes everywhere. Like you could punch a whole bunch of holes on either of the bottom here, you know, and make dangles coming off the wings. And that kind of reminds me of like a Chinese kite, which I think is super, super cool. So there's lots of inspiration, lots of different things you can do. If you've got a hole punch, you are like, you're good to go. If you're like me, I punch holes in everything. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. All right. <coughs> Aaron will know, do you have an awl to poke through it? I do. I just do not have it on hand. And I actually, well, this one is in, I do have one on hand. This one's in really bad shape. But that would work too. <coughs> Excuse me, because this one has that file on it. So you could use it to really kind of sand down. That would help. Oh, that makes a big difference. You're so smart. I'm so glad I have you guys as friends. <laughs> All right. So we have the holes on this guy. Let's put some paint to him. Let's make a mess. So I'm just going to bring a, um, a piece of paper in here. I'll fold it in half. I'm going to fold it in again just because we don't need that much paper. I'm just going to kind of sit this to the side. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got two different paint brushes going to use paint brushes instead of my fingers because I do have to continue to create after after we paint and I don't want this paint to transfer anywhere. Joan says, haven't used it yet, but I bought an Impress Art one that I like. Yes, Sarah and I looked at the ones from Impress Art, um, the hole punches. I hope that's what we're talking about. <laughs> Otherwise, I sound like a crazy person. Um, yeah, I think, I think it looks really good too. Impress Art has, they have great tools. So I, I would imagine that since metal is their business, uh, that their hole punch is probably pretty great. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little drop of paint out in that antique copper. And then we're gonna put a little drop of the green. Thank you, Joan says she likes my ring. Thank you, I got that on Etsy a long time ago. Pretty cute, I like it. All right. Now, here's our butterfly. Um, yes, Emily, Vintage has one too. And again, metal is their business. So you have to imagine that like their, their metal punches are probably fantastic too. All right, so we're just gonna hit this with some green. I don't know, we're just gonna, we're just gonna play. So let's make the top of this, add some green up here to the top. And I'm not being, like you can get really intricate with this if you want. You could you could paint every single one of the openings on the wing a different color. You could just get really kind of crazy with it. I'm not. I'm just going to keep it simple. 
particularly because I don't want to keep you guys here forever, but you know, just hit it with some of the copper and hit it with some of the green. And if you don't like something, you can always, hold on, you can always come in with a paper towel if you work fast, because this stuff, if you've never used patina paints before, whoa, they do dry really, really quickly. So if you, if you want to wipe anything away, you definitely need to do that right away. All right, so we're just going to add some copper up in here. Like really, there's no rhyme or reason to this, but I think these two colors work really well together. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it. Like whatever it is, it, it, however it turns out, I'm good with it. And you know, if later on I decide that I don't like it, I can always come in with some fine grit sandpaper or um, a reliefing block. I am going to hit this with the block here in just a second. Um, you can always come in and change it later. It's never permanent. And what's really cool, like I said, you can, you can really layer these colors up. I said I wasn't going to use my fingers, and look, here I am using my fingers. <laughs> That's the inner child in me. Must finger paint. Must, must finger paint. I just can't help myself. So I just kind of messily threw that on there, right? I mean, that's, it doesn't have to be precise. But now you can bet that I do like, I really enjoy sitting down and getting very precise with these as well. And now I have enough components. I can do that for, you know, <laughs> I can work on it until January or February. I probably won't even be done by then. All right. So now I'm going to bring in my block. I've got one of these reliefing blocks and it's an older one. So it, it's, I really need a new one. So this is just going to take some of that paint off of the raised surface. I just want to hit it. Rita. And if you'll notice, I left like the main body plain just because I wanted to, I, I, I don't want to lose that antique brass because the rest of the components in this necklace are that antique brass as well. So this is going to shine up. I know it's, it's kind of hard to tell here, but you see how it's shining up the raised surfaces. Ooh, Pamela, I have a drill press. I have two, actually. Um, I have one that I got um, at a yard sale a million years ago. And then uh, my husband gave me a drill press a couple of Christmases ago. So I do have one. I don't use it very, very often. I need to bring it up here. It's in the garage. I need to bring it up here. And set it up. If I would set it up, I would be more likely to use it because it's sometimes it's just too much trouble to go all the way down <laughs> stairs to the garage, you know. All right, so there's that. I mean, it's not this is not like a work of art by any means, but <laughs> look at my hands. <laughs> oh my goodness. So there he is. I think he's pretty. He kind of looks like I don't know some green stained glass. And I can always go in later and, you know, and add a little bit more. I may add some different colors to this. I have some different shades of green that I think would be really, really cool. So I'm thinking I'm going to move on from this just so that we can get on with the rest of the necklace. But <laughs> Joan says I need a she shed for my big tools. I do need a she shed. <laughs> I... <sighs> So have you guys, you know the She Shed commercial where Cheryl's, Cheryl's She Shed is on fire? I don't know if you guys have paid attention <laughs> to that. Let's add some paint to these two. Um, so I don't know if you've really paid much attention to that commercial, but I am completely convinced that her husband is the one who set the She Shed on fire. Because in the commercial, I don't know if it was just a continuity error, error or what, but... <laughs> He says it was struck by lightning, but nothing is wet. Like, it doesn't look like it's been raining. 
uh, he's standing there with the with the water hose. Like, is he using the water hose to put the fire out? Because he's way too far away. And if not, if he's out there with the water hose and he's not trying to put the she shed fire out, he's out there watering the plants. So if he's watering the plants, then clearly it didn't rain, right? So I I I'm a believer. He he burned down the she shed. <laughs> That's why he's like that's fabulous news or whatever when she's like I'm getting a new she she or she shed all right yeah all right <laughs> adding some green to this I want a she she or she shed and let's go ahead and add some of the copper to it too just so that we bring this into these other pieces poor Cheryl and her she shed it's funny we have the weirdest conversations on this, on these project days. We talk about some really weird stuff. So, speaking of weird stuff, as I'm just slapping some paint on this. I can't remember if it was on here last week or if it was over on the Jesse James beads. Where, I think that's pretty. <laughs> um, where, I'm going to have a hard time buffing this, but that's all right. What were we talking about? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, last week. I don't remember if it was here on Sarah Ellis Designs Facebook page uh, video or if it was over on Jesse James Speeds, but we were talking about uh, football. <laughs> I know, talking football to women is just so silly because there are not a whole lot of women that like football. But anyway, we were talking about how I like the, um, the Patriots just to irritate my family. <laughs> But my team really is the um, Kansas City Chiefs. You guys, I don't know if anybody saw, if anybody was watching last night, but I'm such a weird, I'm such a weird kid. Like, I'm making jewelry and talking football. Anyway, Patrick Mahomes, he got hurt. I was so sad. He dislocated his, um, his kneecap, and he might be out for three weeks. I'm so, I'm so sad. But we still managed to beat the Broncos it was like 30 to 6 it was really good but I was worried when they brought in that guy I love okay so let me just be completely honest with you okay you want to know how I pick football teams <laughs> to root for okay number one Patrick Mahomes is just cute as an absolute button he is just the cutest little guy he, well, he's not little by any and he would probably be very offended for me to say that about him um He's adorable. I think he is just adorable. He's 24, so he's way too young for me, but he's still adorable. So I pick players that are super adorable. <laughs> I pick teams that have players that are adorable, that play really good football. He's like one of the best quarterbacks there is. Um, but also, I really like their uniforms. <laughs> and that's the woman in me. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, I like their uniforms. But that's okay. My teenage son, he um, he likes the Bengals. That's his team. And I'm convinced that he likes the Bengals because they are black and orange. And that is, <laughs> those are Halloween colors. He will never admit that. But I'm like, yeah, you picked that. You picked them for their uniforms too. I know you did. <laughs> Oh, yes, Sharon. She likes to bead and watch football. <laughs> Rachel. Poor Rachel. She sheds in American football. I know. Americans are a weird breed. That's all right. But everybody's got something, right? There's soccer, which they call football. Everybody likes that, and rugby. All right, so I have managed to completely destroy my hands, and... We have painted up these flowers and now they match, which I think is cool. I, I really think these are going to look really pretty once we get the necklace together. He likes the bangles because he likes underdogs. <laughs> yep, yep. That's funny because I before the Chiefs were my team and all I had was the Patriots to irritate my family with, I always said that the Browns were my team because I liked to pick the underdog. But the Browns have actually done pretty good. Okay, my, oh my gosh, I cannot believe we're talking about football. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's make jewelry. Forget football. 
Okay, so we have our components. These are ready to go. I hit them with the block. I can always go back and work on them a little bit more once the necklace is, is in necklace form. Then, <laughs> oh, you guys are still talking about it. It's disturbing. They showed the, the dogs popping that knee back in place. I know, I had to get up and like turn around for that. <laughs> okay. So once you put the whole necklace together and you've got it on a bust, then you can really look at it and decide what else it needs. You can always take, because we're going to be working with more antique brass stuff, you can always add more patina. Like you could hit the, um, the chain with some patina. You could hit any of the little beads. You could also, so patina is one of those things. I just, I really love it. More is always more and less is a complete bore. So when you put the, the necklace on a bust and you see it laying there, then you get a better idea of where some more of the colors that you're using could go, right? So let's start with what we've got and let's build this necklace up. This part is really just super, super simple. I really just hope that more than anything, I give you some inspiration here. So one of these little flower guys, there are three holes. There's one on either end. And then down here, I didn't want to put this hole in the center. So I, I off-centered it just a tiny, tiny bit. And I took two of the beads from the Pumpkin Spice and Everything Nice Design Elements Mix. And I used eye pins to make loops. So I didn't do my regular wrapped loops on these just because it was just too much metal, okay? So I'm gonna attach this so that you see where it's gonna go and then we'll, we will do the other beads, okay? Just, just to kind of give you an idea of where we're going with all of this. All right. So that's gonna go right on that wing tip, okay? So the other one these are not the best jump rings, but the other one's going to go over here as well, but we need to make those two um, beaded connections, so let's do that. <laughs> Her cat is here watching the live. Oh my gosh, Rachel. What's your cat's name? Tell your cat I said hello and thanks for joining us. <laughs> this is just the weirdest Facebook Live ever. <laughs> All right, so I have eye pins. Let's use eye pins. I very rarely use eye pins and head pins for things. Um, I tend to make them on my own. I cannot believe my hands are so filthy. But sometimes it's just easier. So thread that guy on. And I'm going to grab that wire right above the bead. And instead of bending the wire over the top of the pliers, I'm going to hold this bead in my fingers and I'm bending the wire itself. And you want to be careful because you can crack the top of your bead, particularly glass beads. And Swarovski, Swarovski is a little bit softer. It doesn't tend to crack as easily as glass, um, but it will crack. So you do have to be as gentle as you can be. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead. <laughs> Anybody who's just now joining us, I'm so sorry that my hands are filthy. We were playing with paint. So don't think that I'm just like this dirty <laughs> heathen that did not shower before. <laughs> we, were, we were playing with paint a little while ago. All right, so grabbing that wire with my round nose pliers and I'm just gonna roll back towards the bead to close that loop. And again, need to be really careful. I can hear that, that bead cracking. So there's that one. And it's not completely closed, but that's okay because we're gonna open it back up here in just a second. We're gonna do one more with this other orange bead. It has that really cool finish to it. I don't really know what you call that, but I, I am, I'm here for it. I like it a lot. All right, so same thing. It looks like I'm a car mechanic. <laughs> it really does. All right, so I'm just bending the wire. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to trim off. And you can see I'm, I'm leaving myself about a little bit more, just a smidgen more than a fourth of an inch. Okay, just a smidgen. And that is a technical term, in case you were wondering. 
Now I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers, grabbing that wire right at the tip, and I'm just going to roll back. And I don't know if you noticed, but I don't do it in one smooth motion. I'm making tiny little, tiny little movements. For me, that's the trick because making these little loops is so much harder for me than doing wire wrapped loops. So the smaller, little, tiny movements, the better. All right, so these two are ready to go. Let's go ahead and attach them just like we have attached this, okay? And I already have the jump rings ready to go, which is super convenient. Like I said, I, I really just wanted to kind of save some time here. So we're gonna open, eh, well, I was thinking we would open the loops on those beads. Let's do that. No, we still need a jump ring here. I'm missing a jump ring. All right, there we go. So I guess I won't be opening the loops, that's okay can close them up later. So I'm just gonna open up a jump ring. I'm gonna thread it to that, that hole that we punched right at the edge of the wing. And I'm gonna thread on this beautiful orange bead and close that back. And we will open this one. Okay, now if you'll notice, when I'm opening my loop, I'm opening it the same way Your kitty likes me. That's so sweet. <laughs> How many cups of coffee have you had today? I know. I know. Um, <laughs> several. <laughs> so, like I was saying, I open this laterally. I, you don't ever want to grab a hold of your loop and pull it open, okay? You want to grab it and it's that twisting motion. It's the same twisting motion as if you were opening a jump ring, okay? Then hook that to the jump ring that's already here. And then just that same lateral movement to close it back. Okay, that'll keep your, your loops <laughs> looking nice and neat if you have to open and close them more than once, okay? All right, same thing here. Ex no, he doesn't go here. He goes over here. So we're going to open up. I'm just naturally caffeinated. <laughs> I'm always high energy. If I'm not high energy, <clears throat> then you know something is wrong. Because I'm, I'm pretty much always bouncing off the walls. All right, so the top part of our necklace is ready to go. Now it's time to talk about what we're gonna add to the rest of this. So we, we punched a hole here in his body down here at the very bottom. And I want to add some dangles to that. Um, I want to drape my chain. I've got two different kinds of chain that we are going to drape. This is the wrong piece. All right, I have two short pieces. I'll, I'll give you the measurements of these here in just a second. I know it doesn't really matter, but you never know. So I have two different styles of chain. This is just small curb chain. And this one, I cannot remember what the name of this one is called. They're both from Beadalon. Um, so they're they're pretty they're pretty easy to find. If you're interested in these chains in particular, um, I can give you links for these uh, in, after the video is over. If not, definitely go check out the Biddy chain over on Jesse James Beads website. They have the best chain. Sarah sent me a bunch of this small Biddy chain. Oh my gosh, I love tiny chain, and they have a really good selection, a lot of variety, way more than than some other places. So. Oh, she's a permanently exhausted pigeon, not a night owl. That's so cute. <laughs> I have two sizes of chain, and I already put the jump rings on it. So they're, they're two different lengths because I don't want them to hang right on top of each other. Uh, one of these is three inches, and the other one is about four and a half inches. Okay, so you do have that graduation in the... Um, in the sizes, about a half of an inch is the difference between the two links of the chain. And you need two for each. So one's gonna do this over here, just kind of helping you to visualize where we're going. And then this one's gonna go over here. <laughs> and why am I not just connecting it as I'm talking? Um, and then we're gonna use these larger jump rings. Uh, 
in addition to the smaller four millimeter jump rings that are there because I want the larger jump ring to lay flat. And in order for the jump ring to lay flat, the larger one to lay flat, the four millimeters have to be the go between, okay? They're gonna hang this way, whereas the other one is gonna hang this way, if that makes sense. Look how funky, ew. <laughs> As if I didn't already look like I was a mess. Okay, so let's start with that center one and then we're gonna make a really cute little beaded dangle to hang as well. So just a four millimeter jump ring here that's gonna hang, like I said, this is gonna hang side to side. I mean, not side, it's gonna hang this direction. We want that middle one to hang or lay flat. So I'm gonna hook that guy in. Go ahead and close that jump ring back so you can see now that one's gonna lay flat. So this becomes part of the design, okay? It's not just a connection. This is actually part of what uh, makes the design work. All right, same thing over here. We want two of the large jump rings, one here and one here and, oh, there it is. These are gonna be our little, our junctions for our chain. I thought I could cheat and use my finger. Don't do that. <laughs> use two pairs of pliers to open and close your jump rings, please. Do not use your fingers. You will regret it, particularly if you have a manicure. I cannot keep my nails manicured. I try. It just doesn't work out because then I end up looking like this and it was pointless. All right, so we have our large jump rings and we're gonna do the chain and then we're gonna make our dangle here in the middle. So the first chain is the shorter section. This was that three inch section. I'm using a four millimeter jump ring on the end. Just gonna open and close that guy. And same thing, we're gonna connect this one to that center jump ring. So that's going to drape just like that, okay? And now we're going to take this different style chain to go underneath it, and it's going to drape just a little bit longer. So we're going to open this jump ring. And put that on. Go ahead and close that back. Same thing over here on this end. You just want to be sure that you're going on the outer edge of that the other four millimeter jump ring that's already there so that you don't get these two twisted. Don't want your, your two pieces of chain, chains to twist. All right, so that's one side. You can see how the butterfly shape is coming down into the rest of the design. That's why I kind of chose this layout because it's like an extension of the wing. That's like the, the whole movement of the necklace in shape is butterfly. So I hope that makes sense design-wise as to why it is that I made the choice to drape the way that I did. Other than the fact that it just looks really cool, <laughs> it really is an extension of that shape. All right, other jump ring over here on the other side. Oh, goodness. <laughs> she says <laughs> she needs a full-time maid and chef so she can do this all the time. Ugh, I need I need that too. <laughs> I do do this all the time. <laughs> and I definitely, definitely need a chef and a maid. I don't cook, so a chef would be phenomenal. My husband cooks, but I do not. I burn things. I can boil water for you. I can make you some cereal. That's pretty much it. If you ask my children if they like my cooking, <laughs> you should see the face. Just imagine, just imagine the face. Say, mom doesn't cook, mom burns things. All right, so, whoops, I think I did twist those two, did I? No, it was just the way it was laying. Okay, so there are the drapes on either side. That's gonna be really, really cool. Oh, 
Oh, this live has cheered her up to no end. She was feeling a bit fed up. Rachel, oh, <laughs> I know. I giggle. I just, I can't help it, you guys. If I was a stuffed shirt, for one thing, you guys wouldn't come hang out with me. I think my giggle is what brings you guys. <laughs> I'm always pretty chipper. Like I said, if I'm not, there's something going on. The coffee machine is broken or something. All right, so <laughs> I went ahead and put an eye pin through this um, this bead. This is also from that pumpkin spice and everything nice. There are a couple of these. Um, one thing to note though, is that the loops are going to opposite directions. So the loop on the top is going this way where the loop on the bottom is going this way. Okay, keep that in mind. Um, and it actually goes this direction. Had to double check. So we're gonna attach this in between the two pieces of chain on that large jump ring. And instead of opening the loop on this, I'm gonna open the jump ring. I normally would not uh, recommend doing that because I don't like to open jump rings more, more times than I need to, but it just seems to be easier in this case. So opening that, and then just gonna thread that on and close that back. Okay, now that will hang really beautifully in the middle and later on while this is on a bust and you're really looking at it, you can add some patina to the bead if you wanted to or you could hit this chain with some patina just in little tiny places just to kind of bring that color down some more if you want to. But we're gonna build a, a little cluster dangle here with some beads that I have already put on head pins. Um, there's two that I haven't. We are gonna do those together, but I didn't wanna do all of them because I don't want you guys to, to be here forever. But then we're gonna make this little cluster thing here. Um, does that come in a kit? It does not come in a kit. Uh, I actually bought all of these pieces. You should go back and watch the replay. Um, all of these metal components on Amazon because I had, uh, <laughs> I have a major shopping problem. So no, but you can definitely get the beads and the patina paints over on Jesse James beads. So yes, Anita says, is the patina permanent? Over time, the patina will start to fade a little bit, not much. There is a sealer that you can put over it. I do have one. It comes in gloss and it comes in matte, so you can seal them if you want to. Um, it's not something that I would necessarily want to get wet. It says on the bottle that you can, but I, I probably wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't want to wear it in, in the ocean, particularly in salt water. Um, or anything like that. So over time, I think it will kind of fade, but for the most part, no, I think you're in good shape. I mean, unless you're gonna do something totally crazy with your jewelry, which I, I don't I don't know. I don't know what people do with, <laughs> with their jewelry. I say that like, you would never do something crazy, but you know, you never know. All right, so I'm just gonna put these two beads on a head pin and then we're just gonna build this little, it looks like a little cr cluster of grapes that we're going to build here at the end. I'm going to create wrapped loops on these though because I just can't help myself. <laughs> so grabbing that wire, bending it 90 degrees, coming in with my round nose pliers to go up and over. Okay, and now I'm going to adjust my grip. Okay, I'm going to switch hands. Let's move this out of the way so we can focus. Okay, not you guys, the camera. <laughs> I, I realized how bossy that kind of sounded. I'm so sorry. I'm not bossing you. You don't need to focus. <laughs> All right. And just wire wrapping that around just like that. So when I take it off, got my nice wire wrapped loop here at the top and I can trim off my tail because I don't need it. And don't forget your, um, your wire wrapped loops. A lot of times, when I'm playing with patina, I will hit that paint because you can wipe it off the bead real quick. It'll stay on the um, on the metal though, so you can hit that with some patina if you wanted to. I know, right? Rachel says it wouldn't be alive with me if if I didn't do at least one right <laughs> one wrapped loop. I know I have to because you guys seem to like it. It's really weird. <laughs> And it's satisfying to me, so <laughs> that's why I didn't do all of these ahead of time. 
All right, up and over. Okay, adjusting my grip. On around. And then wrapping around. And the metal for these head pins is a little stiff. I don't know if you could tell. It is a little on the stiff side. It's not my favorite, but. All right, so there are my wraps loops for these. And we also have the little leaves. All of these came from the Pumpkin Spice and Everything Nice um, design elements from Jesse James Beads, if you want these exact beads. And there are a whole lot in that, in that mix. All right, so I'm gonna link all of this together with some jump rings. Okay, so if you've ever been curious as to how to make a cluster, I'm gonna make one. Um, I know it's, it's not really hard, and I'm sure that you probably made them yourself, but just in case you haven't, here is a fun little, a little idea, because they make really cool earrings too. All right, so I'm gonna open up a jump ring. This is a four millimeter jump ring because I don't want the jump rings to be part of the design. I want these to kind of disappear into the cluster. So I've opened that up and I'm gonna thread on one of these leaves, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and close that jump ring back. That's gonna be the bottom. So now we need to step up. So we're gonna step up with a jump ring. We're gonna open that jump ring. We're gonna thread it onto the jump ring that's on top of the leaf, okay? And you can see the direction that this jump ring is going. Now it's going that side to side. So we're gonna take advantage of that. We're gonna put one bead on one side before we close the jump ring. And then we're gonna put one bead on the other side. So now when it hangs, it's gonna hang like that, okay? Go ahead and close that jump ring. Next opening up another jump ring. And this time we're gonna use leaves. So I'm gonna hook that jump ring, the last jump ring that I added, and same thing, we're gonna do a leaf on one side and a leaf on the other side, and then we're gonna close that jump ring, okay? Now we've got one more to go, and then we will have our jump ring connection. Actually, I don't even think we need that extra jump ring. We'll see. All right, so opening this one, hooking that very last jump ring. If you have trouble with this, because it's almost one of those things where you need an extra hand, because if you have to constantly pick this up and, and sit it back down, pick it up and sit it back down, particularly if you're making a really big cluster, it's really easy to lose your jump ring in it, and then it just becomes kind of a mess. If you have an extra hand, let me show you what I mean. I have one of these, I don't even remember where I got it. This guy, it has the magnifying glass on it, but then it has these little clips. I use this all the time when I make bead clusters because I can clip the last jump ring and just have it hanging there. So I don't have to search for it when I sit it down and I lose the jump ring. You know what I'm saying. So um, just a, a side note, if you've got something like that on hand that you can use, it definitely helps when you're putting together something like this where you certainly could benefit from having an extra hand. All right, so there is all of our beads in a nice little cluster, okay? I did the cluster because I love it. I could add an extra jump ring, but I, you know what? I'm not going to. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna attach this directly. Let's see, what direction is that going? No, I am. No, I will. <laughs> Can't make up my mind. So I'm gonna attach this directly to the loop on the bottom. The reason that I made the cluster, like I was saying, sorry, I didn't mean to get off on another tangent there, um, is because not only does it look really, really cool and it makes great earrings, but this time of year, a lot of jewelry that I see that people make, a lot of handmade jewelry focuses on holly berries and holly leaves, say for Christmas, or grapes. And beads make phenomenal grapes, right? You could do a whole bracelet in these clusters with leaves and beads that were purple or wine colored to make, you know, grape leaf, not grape, grape clusters rather, 
with leaves and then hit those leaves with some patina. Just really, I, I hope I'm inspiring you. I really do. I hope I'm giving you some ideas. I know we're making this necklace, but just like always, I hope that I give you something where you can take it and do something yourself with it, you know? All right, so the last thing we have to do is just to add some pieces of chain here for the length of our necklace, and then I'll put it on the bust so you guys can see it, and then we will be done. I'm using just some more chain for the length. I have two pieces of chain ready to go. I did want to keep this short because I want this to be up close to my neck. It's not choker length, but I will give you a measurement on my chain sections just so you can kind of get an idea. So six and a half inches is the length on both sides of the chain. Give yourself um, an extra inch for your jump rings and, <laughs> and your clasp. Emily says, thanks, Matt. thanks, Sarah. I have to run to our meeting. I'm, I'm so glad you got to be here. It was so fun. Have a good weekend. You guys put up with a lot of silly from me, and I appreciate it so much. <laughs> it's one of those things you never know, you know. I'm I'm a peach, and not everybody likes peaches, so <laughs> you never know, right? All right. Yes, L, L the ruler. <laughs> all right, so I have all this together. I'm gonna put this on the neck, and then I'm gonna flip you guys around so you can look at it up close and personal, and can see how it is laid out. Um, sorry, I'm tying a knot in the chain. I don't mean to be sticking my arm in the shot there. I apologize. All right, so I do have a little twist in it. Here, let me untwist it and then I'll show it to you. Okay, gonna flip you around. Thank you, Joan. And I know you're not just saying that because you're my friend, because if my shows were not fun, <laughs> you would tell me. You're like, you're gonna have to do something else. <laughs> All right. Ta-da, look at what we did. Isn't it pretty? So yeah, you can't tell me butterflies are not fall. That is a fall butterfly if I've ever seen one. The, the green and the copper paints, the patina paints on, the butterfly and the flowers, once you get the whole piece together, it's very subtle. I know, you know, that individually that butterfly, it was like you put that, that paint on it, it was like pow in your face, right? But when you put it all together, it really just kind of, I don't know, it, it washes everything and really kind of melts everything together. So it's not really so in your face the painting part is not really in your face the butterfly now that's in your face that's a big butterfly <laughs> you have to be a brave one to wear this kind of necklace but I thought it was cool I thought it was a really neat design I'm glad that I got to use some of the um the antique brass components because I'm gonna have them for the rest of my life I'm gonna have so many of them it's gonna take forever so it was fun to get to use some of those up um and the patina paints go check out Jesse James Beads 33% off sale for Sarah's birthday hooray grab some patinas Pick up the pumpkin spice and everything nice mix and use those fall colors as your inspiration. Check out the vintage pieces that are also over on Jesse James Beads because they look beautiful all by themselves. They look beautiful with patina paints on. It doesn't really make any difference, but there's lots of inspiration. I think that's kind of the, if I just get all the words out in short little choppy bits, there's lots of inspiration on the Jesse James Beads website. So go take a look because I'm always inspired by what is there. Lots of chain, lots of pendants, lots of good stuff. So, all right, this has been fun. I love it. I love it that you guys come and hang out with me and we talk about ridiculously un things like football and <laughs> just silly stuff. It's great. I appreciate it. You guys let me be me and you know, I couldn't ask for a better way to end my week. So. Much love to all of you. You guys have a absolutely wonderful Vintage Salvage. I'm going to make a note as soon as this is over. I'm going to make a note. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the weekend. You guys think happy thoughts for me. Try to keep the rain away or at least not a huge muddy mess. And I will see you guys again next week. You can catch me on Jesse James Bead's Facebook page. You can also catch me on Silver Silk and More Facebook page on Thursdays and here at Sarah Ells Designs. You guys have a really, really good weekend. I love you, bye.